Uh, Diane says, what are the most important factors to consider for a coach or consultant when choosing between group coaching, membership courses, or mastermind when evolving from one-to-one -to, -one to a more leveraged business model? Well, first of all, um, we use this word leveraged all the time, right? Like I use it too, because it's such a good word, but like, what does it really mean leverage? Like, let's just talk about, let's just take a stab at your best definition. Let's put it in the chat. What does leverage mean to you? Yes, one to many, making the most money with less additional time needed. Yes, impacts more people, more revenue for a single effort, making the most of, more from less. Exactly, you guys should all work for Webster's. And in fact, um, I think the Webster's definition was beyond the financial, the one for financial agencies was um, making more with less. Although I can't seem to put my fingers on it right this second, but it was something like exactly that, like making more from less with less. So yes. Okay. So in terms of like, what are the most important considerations? I mean, a lot of that has to do with you and by you, it's like the collective you and each and every one of you, like what, you know, yeah, you know, someone else is, someone is going to, you're going to see someone talk on a podcast about group coaching is the bomb. This is why it's so great. Everybody should do this. You can really leverage. Um, it, it's a great way to to leverage your business, membership, courses, mastermind, one-to-one, -one, all of them can be leveraged. But in terms of the considerations, that's really up to each and every individual person. Because if you just fundamentally do not like um, working with groups and many people at one time, it doesn't matter how much you can leverage it. That needs to come off the table. Like, it just, like... Why? Like, you, this is like the opposite of leverage. You're going to be, you know, even if you make a ton of money, if you don't like it, you, you know, so we have to have these honest conversations with ourselves. And, um, you know, my coach for the longest time, and I love him to death, but like, I know I can make more money doing like X, Y, and Z, but I kept telling them like, I hate X, Y, and Z. I'm like, yeah, but Jen, like if you just do X, Y, and Z, like, it's just going to be so much more money. And it's just, you know, and, um, and, you know, we always would come back to that. And like, now I'm really at peace. There's just certain things like I don't want to do. So, so that's just like the basic thing. And, you know, you're a coach and, um, and so you already know this, but sometimes I think it's really good to hear it again, to be reminded again, like get off the table, what you do not like, what you have never liked, you are not going to like it tomorrow. Just that's okay. So, and that's actually a blessing once you can do that because it limits your options. Now you can really focus on, focuses, focus on the stuff that makes you feel like pumped up. Like you think about it and you imagine yourself doing it and you're like, yeah, that seems really fun. So um, let's just really quick go through each one and talk about um, ways to leverage it and, and, and like sort of pros and cons kind of thing. Okay. So group coaching, this is wonderful for anybody who doesn't already have a large audience and you can put together an offer very quickly. You don't need a fancy sales page. And then you can, um, you can, you can present the offer personally. It's one of my favorite things to do. You could reach out to people personally and invite them into this special group coaching program that you're doing. It doesn't have to be this big old marketing thing. And once you get your group coaching like down pat with the way that you run it, the content that you create, um, and the more, the more that you systemize it, right? Like as much as possible, you still have to show up live, but there is a way that you can scale it and, and, and really leverage your time because you you can like just rinse and repeat. I mean, obviously your clients are always going to be different and you're going to be doing, have new scenarios, which keeps it interesting for you, frankly, like you who wants the same thing all the time. Um, but you can really grow that and it can be very lucrative. Um, membership. This is what I'm going to put at the very bottom of this list. Okay. And when it comes to leveraging, like, I don't think of membership sites that much, not right off the bat. Sorry, I can't work Google slides. Um, I don't think of memberships right off the bat is like, oh yeah, this is a great way to leverage my business. Um, de definitely not at the beginning part of your business. Okay. That's to me, I think of that as sort of like a, an upsell at the end of a big course or at the end of your group coaching. Um, and that way, like maybe you have a vault full of trainings where 
you know, or people will always get access to your new monthly webinar, or maybe you do just one special webinar every month, or it's like VIP where you have strategy calls every month. But I could not, you know, live on this membership alone unless I really busted my hiney. Again, the opposite of leveraging. I would need, you need so many numbers to make this lucrative, right? If you're offering a $47 product, do the math. Like, how many people need to be a part of it and stay a part of it to really for you to like pay for your groceries, right? It's, it's a lot. And so it's nice to have, it's definitely not the first thing I go to. So that one's easy, like put that one over to the left. Courses. Okay. In terms of leverage, a lot of people would argue this is, this is where it's at. Like this is where you can truly leverage because you create your content, your pre-recorded content one time, you create the sales pages, your pre-launch stuff, all your launch stuff, the videos, the millions of things that go into it. But once you nail that and you have a, a you have an offer that sells, you have a course that sells, you can rinse and you can really just automate that almost, right? I will pause here for a moment and just say like this whole evergreen thing, and you guys have heard me go off about this before, but I feel like that evergreen bit is a bill of goods a little bit. Okay. So I think people are getting sold on this idea of evergreen. It's very possible, but it's not exactly like it sounds. And there is no such thing as passive income. None of this crap is passive. Okay. This is hard work and you all know it because you're doing it. Uh, doesn't mean it's not enjoyable, but like evergreen. So it's like evergreen with an asterisk, right? So front row CEO, we can now, we know exact. I know I teach the same thing every pre-launch or every launch, same videos. I'm reusing them. I'll probably reuse them a couple more times before I redo them. You know, sales page done. Everything's done. All my emails are done. It's so great. And every time I launch it now, it's it's a really big launch. It 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 it's definitely leveraged. Took a long time. It took a lot of work to get there, but it's leveraged. It's good, but it's not completely evergreen. It's not evergreen because I teach it live because there's a live component. And I personally believe with these high ticket, truly leveraged courses that like you're charging a lot for, um, people expect an experience, not just content because content is cheap. Information is cheap. We could all find what we need out there on the interwebs, right? But it's your expertise and um, and you, people getting able to interact with you personally. I, per- I think it's important. So that's why I mean, maybe one day I'll, I'll give it a shot to truly evergreen front row CEO, but I think people at that price point want some sort of experience. Um, then mastermind, like what is a mastermind? Everybody's throwing around the word mastermind really and truly like mastermind in its truest sense. Like when it first came about is like, these are more like um, you put together a cohort of people who are all in the same place or or maybe a little head of the rest of the people. Like you're all in the same place and you're masterminding. So it's like, you're not teaching, but you're making, you're facilitating this space for people who are all kind of in the same place to share their brilliant ideas, give each other feedback and all that sort of stuff. Um, And that, and so in that sense, like that's, that's a tough one to pull off in, in that sense. But if you're talking about it in terms of just sort of a higher ticket membership, um, yeah, I mean, again, like not the first thing that I would go to. And then one-to-one, I know you're already doing one-to-one, um, but the truth is if you set it up correctly, your one-to-one, your one-to-one can be more leveraged than you think. Meaning, you know, you charge more, you take less clients, um, and you repeat your rinse and repeat your process for filling up your, your group coaching. And, um, if that's what you really love to do, there's nothing that says you have to go from that to group, to course, to mastermind, you know? So I know that's like the kind of answer nobody really likes in terms of like, well, it just depends, but it really, it really, really depends on so many different variables. We can have a discussion about this. Everybody, if you have any questions or feedback, or if you disagree with me, I'd love to hear it. 